Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Adventure Game Show Geek. Today is going to be a review of the brand new Welsh language game show known as Gwach Ehebin. Before this video begins, I am going to apologise. I will likely mispronounce the title many times in this video. I'm also going to apologise for all the jumpy cuts that come from me messing up said pronunciation and trying again. English is my first and only language, which means that A, I understood none of the dialogue or writing in the show, and B, it's going to be really hard for me to review it. But it hasn't stopped me before, it won't stop me in the future, and it certainly won't stop me now. Because it is so worth it. And Gwach Ehiben is no exception. The premise is relatively simple. Four teams of four students from four Welsh schools wake up in the middle of nowhere and have to reach shelter before nightfall or else. They have eight hours until sundown, each episode lasting an hour. They have to use a GPS device to travel from location to location, completing a series of puzzles and challenges to gain the next set of coordinates. Watching them and presenting the show is the titular Gwach Ehibin who is sometimes a slightly sinister campfire storyteller in a cosy red blanket and sometimes a glitchy black and white figure with very bad hair day. And most importantly, she's the or else. The true intricacies of the plot escape me, but I did do some research into the Gwach Ehebin, or the Hag of the Mist as I'm going to call her now to spare her the indignity of her name being mispronounced, and also so she doesn't try and take me too. Apparently that's the most folklorishly correct translation, although using Google Translate has turned up quite a variety of not so accurate alternatives. The Ribbon Witch, the Wicked Witch, the Green Witch. Anyway, she has a lot of conflicting stories about her. She's supposed to be very ugly with unkept hair and bat wings. Well, the show kept the hair thing at least. She lives in the mountain mist, but is often seen at rivers or crossroads or occasionally at people's windows lamenting and wailing about a person who is going to die. But in the game show, the Hag of the Mist is less of the warning and more of the cause. I couldn't find any reference to her, to the kids having to find shelter before sundown. She doesn't seem to be specifically nocturnal, so I'm not sure what that, that came from. If you want to read more about her, I'm going to link my source in, in the description below. But enough about the legend, let's look at her in the show. As much as I joked about her killing the kids before, I don't actually think that's what happened. There's no way for me to know for sure, unless someone who does know tells me, but according to the promotional material put out, the children are at risk of being trapped by the witch forever, not killed. This is understandable, as children's media tends to go towards the internal imprisonment rather than death as a consequence to failure. See Jungle Run, Escape from Scorpion Island, or maybe the video I did on this exact topic. It's a popular trend, and arguably more terrifying than death. But recently, the balance has been tipping back towards death, with Project Z and Don't Unleash the Beast having more murderous dispositions. Part of me assumed that Gwach Ehiben would follow the same pattern, but it seems that it's sticking with the old classics. This isn't a bad thing, it's just an observation. Another interesting thing about our dear Miss Tag is that she is the main and only presenter of her show. We've had morally ambiguous figures before, like Trey Guard, the caretaker, and the professor, but as far as we know, we've never had a game show hosted by the villain before. I'm surprised it's taken this long, and it was pretty skillfully done. It really raised the tension, and I hope to see more shows like it in the future. The show has a wide range of challenges. There were simple escape room puzzles, akin to those used in Project Z. There were some classic scout guiding survival skills, such as Morse code and flag language. Morse code appeared twice in the series, which was a little odd. They could have done something like Semaphore instead, which would, have, which would have been the same sort of challenge, but something a bit different. Maybe something to note. There were some bigger statement physical challenges, abseiling, rock climbing, paddle boarding, again seen twice, and crossing river rapids. The independence of the teams, along with the focus on survival skills and orienteering, gives me really strong Raven the Island vibes. There was also some classic game show challenges, such as using a magnet to fish for things, a don't touch the ground game. But most importantly, all the challenges were completely clear. There were no complications just for the sake of complications. I didn't understand anything anyone was saying, and still I always knew what was going on at all times. So kudos to the challenge designers. 
It also showcases some beautiful landscapes. It's worth watching for the locations alone. The yellow and orange teams were exploring forests and rivers and ruins. The red team took the sweeping seashore. The quarry explored by the blue team isn't so much beautiful, but it is striking and rather awe-inspiring. Three of the teams are half and half, two boys, two girls, but one is all four girls. My first assumption was that the school was an all-girls school, but further research uncovered that this wasn't the case. So I'm not sure why the team was like that, unless all the boys at the school are a real bunch of delinquents, but I don't know, it's a bit of a mystery. The show is very high energy, it's just challenge after challenge, but then it would be, as each episode has to fit what is supposedly 4 hours of footage into 18 minutes. Because of the somewhat shorter runtime, I did find the 3 minutes of exposition and recap a little on the side of excess. On any other show it would be a perfectly fine amount, but in this case it makes up a sixth of the show, which is a little much. That final episode though. I'm going to try and avoid spoilers, but the last couple of minutes held a level of tension that I haven't seen in a long time and I really enjoyed. The music, the visuals, the pacing. Don't unleash the beast series 3, take notes. The torch slowly going out was a masterful move, and I really liked the way of the Hag of the Mist finally took her victims. It was so brilliant, a grade 9 ending to a grade 9 series. In conclusion, Guach Hidden is a brilliant game show, unique in many ways and with very few flaws. It definitely deserves the second series, and I, I hope it will, I mean, Don't Unleash the Beast got one, and series one truly was a mess. It's been so nice to have it brightening up my Fridays, and I eagerly wait its return. And that's all for today. I'll see you next time, and remember, it's only a game, isn't it?